today. AMD fixed their Ryzen 7000 problems, fake GPUs are everywhere and NVIDIA's fighting back, confirmed price of NVIDIA's next GPU and Ryzen 8000 performance is huge. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, budget PC builders can rejoice as AMD has officially released their A620 chipset. That's right, cheaper AM5 boards are finally here for AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs, and they start at a much more affordable $85, so way better than I even thought. But there are of course some compromises. For example, like previous A-series boards, it doesn't look to include CPU overclocking, but it does support memory overclocking, and speaking of memory, the A620 chipset also comes with DDR5 support, but it only gets PCI Express Gen 4. Of course, you don't really need need PCI Express 5.0 for anything other than faster storage. Even the fastest gaming GPUs don't need it. Right now, I've only been able to find a couple boards on Newegg, to which I'll have an affiliate link to the A620 boards down in the description. It won't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Either way, when we look, the cheaper board only has one USB-C 3.2 Gen 1, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, and two USB-2 ports, so not a lot of rear I.O. It also has two M.2 slots, but while one is PCI Express Gen 4 x 4, the other slot is just SATA speeds. The more expensive board does look to have two faster M.2 slots. Like I said, there are some compromises, but for 85 bucks, they're definitely a great option to get into the Ryzen 7000 family of CPUs. Today's video is sponsored by PowerColor. Hey man, are you, uh, uh what are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing, I just... Uh, just don't like the back play. Uh, never mind. We've all been there. You just got your brand new awesome GPU, but there's something missing. Your back plate is meh, so you try to glue paper to it. Well, stop it. Paper won't work. Customize your GPU's backplate the right way with PowerColor's new Devil Skins made for their Red Devil 7900 series of GPUs. You can easily swap out your backplate for something fresh. And you can do it in seconds because they're attached with magnets. So you switch them back and forth as much as you'd like. And let's be honest, they look awesome. My favorite has to be this one. But if I'm being honest, they all look pretty sweet. Not to mention the fact that I've had multiple Red Devil cards over the years and they are seriously impressive. To get your backplate or GPU, check out the link in the description below. Next up for today, there's been a pretty big issue in the GPU market over the last couple of months. Originally starting in China, a slew of unheard of GPU brands began flooding e-commerce sites with some very odd pricing, but they recently began selling in the US. I actually covered an article from Tom's Hardware on it a little while back, and at the time, while the pricing wasn't that much better than reputable brands, it seemed like we were simply getting more competition. Well, it's looking like something else could be going on. And NVIDIA has begun fighting back. In a new report by My Drivers and later by Tom's Hardware, NVIDIA has reportedly denied any relationship with these brands, and they're currently working with e-commerce platforms to get rid of them. Apparently, a couple of the larger Chinese platforms have already gotten rid of them. As for where they're coming from, I have a theory. In two of NVIDIA's tips for consumers to ensure you're buying an official GPU, they reference buying cards made after the mining boom. So I'm thinking miners are taking the GPUs out of their used cards and putting them in new shrouds. We've already caught them trying to cover up damage. This could have been the ultimate goal. Of course, that's just a theory, but it makes sense. NVIDIA's three ways to avoid buying one of these GPUs are, first, to buy a 40 card because they were sold after the mining craze, which of course they would suggest that, but I will say there's a reason the cards are never newer ones. Second is to buy from NVIDIA's official partners, and third, to buy SKUs made after the mining boom, like the 3060 Ti with GDDR6X memory. Ultimately, make sure you avoid buying any of these odd GPU brands or you could have an issue before long. And next up, we finally have the pricing for NVIDIA's next GPU, their RTX 4070 non-TI model. The story comes from Video Cards, who claims that the price was shared and confirmed during a press briefing. And the price is $599. <laughs> 
Now, I will actually say that while still $100 more expensive than the 3070, it's a big drop from the 4070 Ti. Unfortunately, according to leaks, it's also a massive difference in specs. I'm talking from 7,680 cores to 5,888, which you may notice is exactly the same amount of cores as the 3070. Now, it does have higher clocks as well as more memory, though a shorter memory bus. Luckily, the memory is faster, so it ultimately has more bandwidth. All of this means that it should be faster. I mean, the clock speeds are big, but it definitely feels like NVIDIA is almost entirely relying on DLSS3 to compete. And that could be really bad for them because if AMD releases FSR3, which is effectively their version of DLSS3, and it supports NVIDIA cards, you could potentially get way more performance out of the 3070. Of course, that's not a guarantee, but it really just doesn't feel like a new generational jump. And at $100 more, it still sort of sucks. And lastly for today, we have our first big leak on AMD's next-gen Ryzen 8000 CPUs. I'm talking specs, performance, and more. The story comes from a new video by Red Gaming Tech, where he goes over quite a few things from his sources. Starting things off, he claims that Ryzen 8000 will be built on the 4 nanometer process, while AMD's next-gen Epic lineup will be built on the 3 nanometer process. Next, it will not have the big dot little core design that we've been seeing. Those will only be for the notebook parts, at least for now. One really big reveal is that each chiplet will continue to get 8 cores per chiplet, which means the maximum core count will remain at 16 cores. That's a bit unfortunate, but the performance is all that really matters in the end, and according to this, this, Ryzen 8000 will have it in spades. According to his sources, we're looking at 20 to 25 percent IPC increase over Ryzen 7000, with one source even claiming we could see 25 percent plus. That's obviously a big jump yet again from one generation over the next, and definitely could be a big issue for Intel, especially if they release their CPUs this year like we saw from that Gigabyte announcement. Though speaking of, Gigabyte has since released a statement on that saying that they misspoke and they don't know when Ryzen 8000 will release. Of course, that could just be to cover up their mistake. I'm not sure, but that's what they said. Moving back to the specs, clock speeds are apparently expected to be similar than Ryzen 7000, but there will apparently be more L1 cache, more L2 cache, and maybe some changes to L3. At the end of the day, this definitely is exciting and shows that AMD isn't done bringing the heat. So while that does it for today, are you looking forward to Ryzen 8000 or are you just ready for new NVIDIA GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to pick up one of PowerColor's new backplates. Check that out in the description below. And as always, have a great day.